Welcome all. This afternoon, um, we're going to uh, introduce our first speaker. Up, uh, up first, we have Christina Hopner, and she's going to be talking about uh, programs that she's been running over in New Zealand uh, with uh, using open source in uh, schools over there. Please welcome her warmly. Thank you very much for the invitation and for allowing me to talk here at LCA. And um, as you've my, if you've read my bio, you kind of probably know that I'm not a developer, so this will not be one of these highly technical talks. But hopefully it'll still be somewhat educational. If you were looking for Pia, she'll be actually presenting tomorrow because of a time conflict. So if you had printed out your program earlier on in the week, please make sure kind of to come back tomorrow at the same time for her talk. Um, but what I'm going to talk to you about today is using open source with over 1,100 schools in New Zealand. And since I wrote the presentation abstract, we've actually registered another about 60 on the platform. And um, what we are actually using is Mahara, and I'm talking about myportfolio.school.nz, which is a national e-portfolio service um, supported by the Ministry of Education, um, just over the Tasman. And um, the the nice thing about it is it is one platform for all schools. New Zealand has about 2,500 schools, so we already have almost half of them registered and using the site, and the schools can register for free. And in contrast to a learning management system that is usually installed by schools individually, the nice thing about having a national e-portfolio service is that the schools can all connect to it. They don't have to worry about getting a login transferred or transferring their portfolio when they move from one school to <coughs> another, but they can, uh, the students and also teachers can stay on the same platform throughout their entire school career. And that, of course, makes it easier to keeping artifacts because if you've heard of portfolios, they are kind of always looked at in the lifelong process. So you kind of are supposed to start your portfolio and keep it then for a long time and, and add to it or take things out and change them. And we are using Mahara, uh, which is then op uh, one of the few open source portfolio systems around. Um, it's been in existence since 2006. It was developed initially for tertiary education in New Zealand, but soon thereafter, uh, schools also discovered it and thought, well, that would be really nice to use. So first high schools started using it, and then middle schools or uh, intermediate schools, and now also primary schools using it. And uh, Catalyst IT has been the lead development company for Mahara since the beginning in 2006. And we continue to be the lead developers, but there are also developers around the world uh, supporting the software. And uh, Catalyst, besides Kinair Pacific, is also one of the support companies for my portfolio. So I'll go into more the support model more in a little bit. But kind of what do you actually do on an e-portfolio platform? Well, this is an image that the students can see when they, uh, once they log into the site. And what they do is usually collect content or upload so-called artifacts or anything that they've been used for learning, the um, assignments they've done or projects they've created, uh, they've done um, sometimes also with others. They can also directly reflect in the portfolio in a journal um, in the new terminology oftentimes called blogs if you're not on an e-portfolio software. And um, that way they can build up their portfolio. They can put all these artifacts that they collect or also embed from um, other parties, from other uh, social media services or um, Vimeo YouTube and so on into their e-portfolio and then show off everything in context. Whereas if, you, if they just had a YouTube channel and then went off to Prezi and so on, they would always have to show a link to their teachers, whereas in an e-portfolio like Mahara, they can put everything onto a page and so the teacher who looks at the e-portfolio for giving feedback can then look at everything in context. And what they can also do on top of that, because we realized that just having an e-portfolio for individual users is not really that useful, because nowadays we do a lot of things in collaboration and need the input from others, and also uh, socially construct our knowledge together. Um, that's why there's also collaboration tools available. Um, students can form groups, teachers can set up groups in which they then discuss uh, any topics that they want, and can also build uh, group portfolios and share files with each other. So myportfolio.school.nz began in 2008 and um, at the starting line there were a few schools who were interested in it. Usually it was a few teachers who tried their software out and that was it. So over the next two years until about 2010 um, it 
trundled along really slowly and we, we had about 200, 250 um, schools registered on the site, but there wasn't really much interaction going on. The schools were using it uh, for their classes, for giving feedback to students on projects, uh, for sometimes also having appraisal portfolios for their teachers, but we as support company, for example, didn't really know what was going on because we weren't really involved. The Ministry of Education also didn't really like it too much because they said, well, we have this nice e-portfolio service, but not too many schools are using it, kind of 250 compared to 2,500 schools that are in New Zealand. And therefore, um, the managed learning environment group, who um, was the, the primary um, owner of the e-portfolio, decided to also have so-called taster sessions created. These are two-hour sessions for teachers um, held in a region. One school usually organizes them. And then an external facilitator comes in and teaches at the two-hour sessions to teachers from this area. So it's not just professional development for teachers from one school, for, but for teachers from many schools, usually in about up to 20 uh, teachers in one session. And these um, taster sessions really help to take off my portfolio because within the span of a very short uh, year, we've had many, many more registrations. And um, on top of that, we also made some other changes that I'm going into in a little while. Um, then in 2012, we also had the chance to implement more features, new features, things that the schools wanted. And so from there, on, um, a really nice platform developed for the schools and um, where the schools also participate. So why am I actually talking here at LCA? Because it, clearly it's not a new portfolio conference. What I really want to focus on in the next minutes um, is actually to sh um, show you how we are also trying to use some open source principles because Catalyst IT is a um, open source software development company and so we strongly believe in open source and, and use it with our clients and also with the communities that we work in. And so of course we, we also wanted to see how we can implement something similar then on a platform that we are also supporting. And so looking at the, and, and because open source is kind of a lot, has a lot to do, for, at least for me, with community, then let's look at that for a little bit. So in the sense of uh, the Oxford English Dictionary, community means the condition of sharing or having certain attitudes and interests in common. What my portfolio has in common is currently 1,211 institutions, of which there are about 1,170 schools. The uh, remaining ones are either support organizations, um, sometimes also institutions that want to trial it. We have a few kindergartens on it. And then also um, departments of education from universities in New Zealand, because they say that um, we are training the teachers for working in schools, and so they should also be in the on the platform that the schools use so that they get introduced to the concept of using e-portfolios with their students and also keep their e-portfolio already while at university. And after that, they don't have to transfer it over to the school edition. There's also myportfolio.ac.nz, which is for the tertiary institutions in New Zealand, and um, that has a similar model to dot school. It's just um, funded by the universities and other tertiaries. So within this multi-tenanted institution of 1,211, um, if you just get an account registered and you want to see what you can do, you can already have access to altogether 3,744 pages as of yesterday. Today it's already slightly more. And um, altogether there are almost 200 and, or there are a little over 230,000 portfolio pages created by students, teachers. These can also be templates, these can be group pages and collections. So anything that the students want and teachers want to show off. But once you're registered, you have access already to a big pool of pages that you can look at and either get inspirations for your own work or give feedback on or use even as templates um, with students or students um, amongst themselves. Um, I was talking about the collaborative aspect and on my portfolio we actually leave it open to the students to create groups so we don't shut it down like in a learning management system where it's usually only one or two people who are allowed to create class spaces um, so that then the teacher can have assignments in there and share resources. On my portfolio we leave it wide open. So altogether we have over 8,200 groups. Um, of those, there are th over 3,000 that are entirely open. So once I have a login, I can join any of these over 3,000 groups. These are oftentimes student groups. And one of the 
bigger groups is I love ice cream. I don't really do a lot in there, except sometimes talk about the ice cream flavors or what's going on, but really it is just um, more of the Facebook style group where people just come together for a cause and then it kind of goes away. Um, then there are over 1,100 so-called controlled groups. That is usually when a teacher wants to use a group for class purposes, so especially for assessment. And then we have another uh, type, the approved groups, for, uh, over 4,000, and that just means that the person who set up the group controls who is being let in. So we have multitude of uh, purposes also of these groups, sometimes student-led for various recreational purposes, extracurricular purposes, but also for classroom work, for projects, and most of the groups are um, then also set up by teachers to work individually with their students. Just to give you a brief glimpse of uh, the five biggest groups in my portfolio, um, there we just have the number of members in yellow and in blue the number of forum posts. And as you can already see, that varies quite a bit. My portfolio discussions and administrators, these are the groups that we set up. And um, they have the biggest, or uh, at least, yeah, biggest numbers of um, members. And my portfolio discussions has the largest or biggest number of contributions in terms of forums. And you'll see in about two minutes probably why that is the case. There are other groups on it that don't really discuss a lot. Um, some of them are just there to, to gather members and maybe to contact each other. Whereas also Catchley 2011, that is a school group, so they were able to just contact their students immediately. And the Heikakano e-community is pretty much also there so that um, the um, resources can be shared immediately just with that one group, but there are also many subgroups um, for that e-community of principals um, who work together. Now let's take a closer look at the, the biggest group that we have in there of my portfolio discussions. That is a group that we set up in February 2010, uh, sorry, 2011, because we weren't really happy with the support model that had been in existence up to then. As you might recall, from 2008 up to 2010 it was kind of slow flowing. T schools, schools were doing their own thing. Not really too much was going on what, where we knew what was um, what the teachers and students were doing on it. And so the support model until then was primarily send us an email or give us a call if you have uh, questions and we email you back the answer. Um, at that time, Catalyst wasn't really so much involved in the support except for hosting and keeping the software up to date. Um, but when we got more involved also in the taster sessions, we thought, well, that's not really something that, that works too well and something that also scales because, I mean, you can only give so much support. Currently, we have over 45,000 active members in the community altogether. And so if everybody just calls up, that'll be <laughs> quite a number of phone calls to wield. And oftentimes, as you might know yourself from um, open source communities, users have the same questions. So why not actually set up forums and engage users in there so that they can help each other out? And so we went from this one-on-one -on -one, uh, communication to the one-to-many and many-to-one. And it's having set up forums so that uh, we could actually answer questions directly in the platform for the and primarily teachers are in this group. And um, so we got all sorts of questions like, how can I upload a video? How can I do X, Y, Z? Um, how does this work? And um, so in the beginning, especially when it was technical questions or how to use something on the platform, it was us responding, but already after a very short time, teachers started answering questions themselves. So they were, we were using the form for support purposes and also um, not just support from a company to kind of customer client relationship, but really more in a community sense. And teachers really um, started using it and also asked a lot of questions and then also helped each other out. Um, a second point then of course comes in that this is more of a give and take within the community because the teachers know more and know better how they are using the software within their classrooms. Sure, we can give them best practice examples and let them know what others do in general because the software is used around the world, but how is it actually being used in a New Zealand classroom? That's only what the New Zealand teachers can answer. And so we have some very active uh, teachers from intermediate schools who have been using it from very early on and they support support other teachers there, make pages available that they've created, and then at another point, the same teacher might learn from somebody else who has had a new idea of how to use the software. And so it is a constant giving and taking um, amongst the community. 
And so just some of the beginnings of form sentences that we get very frequently. Does anyone have a video? Does anyone have a template? I would suggest using X, Y, Z because that has worked for me really, really well. How does this feature work or how can I do? Another very content-oriented thing is we started using my portfolio to do X. We started using it for appraisal purposes with our teachers and set up three templates that you can get from here. They are freely available. Just adapt them the way you like. Or take a look at my page that I've created. Can you please give me feedback on it? And teachers do that. And a lot of times, as, as well, no, oh, yeah, a lot of times teachers don't always share resources or share their experiences. But on my portfolio, we've made a really, really good uh, um, experience with that, that they really share their own resources, share what they've done, and um, are more collaborative. Maybe it's also because it's New Zealand and um, there's a fair number of teachers who also do team teaching and uh, engage in project work and inquiry learning. So they are already using methodologies that um, take them from asking others. And therefore, that could also be a very nice thing already, a good starting point for us. What we also do is not just that teachers then ask, can ask themselves or ask how something works, but they can also tell us what they would like to see. I, it would be nice if. Um, and that is something where we also have a wish list forum so that teachers can actually let us know what they'd like to have. That then goes into review. And if the ministry decides to implement new features, then these opinions will be taken into consideration coming straight from the community. So we are not just looking at the wider Mahara community and what features others have suggested or would like to see, but we really look at our local users. In the same sense as I would suggest some even more strong, I would strongly recommend um, using XYZ for that. Or I have shared a page here, take it and see what you want to do with it. One really nice example was that a teacher set up um, a, a page just for writing down reflections and experiences that students gained while on a field trip, just using different heads. And that's been widely shared around my portfolio and really many, many use it. And so she's just made it available. One teacher created it, many can benefit from it, and then they have their students copy these pages as well. So all together, in that community, everybody learns from everyone. Because the teachers learn technical details from us, we learn how our users are actually engaging with the software, teachers learn from each other, and also students learn how to use the software. And sometimes also students ask questions, and then teachers also learn from these questions. Just to give you an impression of um, the frequency of forum posts in that uh, group alone, um, these ones are the slightly over 2,000 ones. And um, the average is 3.4 forum discussions or forum, th uh, forum posts per day, compared to 2008 to 2010 to almost zero. There was the My Portfolio Administrator Forum, but that is not really heavily used. And so here we have consistently throughout the year 3.4 posts on average per day. But of course, as you can see from the dip, that's the school holidays. Uh, so sometimes, of course, nothing comes through. And at other times, we have 30 uh, or slightly less fewer posts per day and a really active community. If you think about 1, 000, over 1,100 members in there, might not really seem so much. But um, we do have quite a few people in there who post regularly, who also help other teachers regularly. And that makes it a nice community because then we can sometimes just sit back and let the teachers talk instead of always coming in from more of a technical perspective or also sharing other things that we've learned from other users. And since not everybody dis um, discusses in these groups, there are many, many lurkers. And sometimes you think, oh, well, lurking, hmm, what do they actually do? But they really learn as well. And um, th sometimes at conferences, I'm told, well, this, this form is really, really nice because even though I don't feel comfortable posting yet or I'd rather send an email, I learn so much from the answers that are given to what other people cr ask. Because um, these uh, teachers might also have the exact same question, just don't think they want to post. And even though we make it a very friendly community, um, still there are some people who just don't feel comfortable post, uh, posting a question just in a group where there are so many people um, 
involved and can see the answer, especially when they're also colleagues. So altogether, everyone on my portfolio shapes the community, and especially those who participate in the discussion group, who ask questions, who answer questions, who um, report bugs, who um, ask for new features, have great ideas of what they'd like to do on it, what they are already doing on it, and also when they participate in our surveys, when we ask which of these features that you've listed you'd like to have, which do you rank highest, then they also shape the software that way and can make direct decisions on what might go into a future rendition of it. So everybody in the platform grows together because we all learn from each other and we, um, and the, my portfolio wasn't or isn't now what it used to be about um, just five years ago. And that is largely due to the community and which has grown particularly since um, the end of 2010. And I'm really, really happy to be involved there because that gives me the great opportunity to always see what users are doing and what questions they have for the software itself. And we are in the fortunate position that most of the features that we implement on my portfolio can actually go back to Core Mahara. So we are not just creating customizations, but everybody else can also benefit from it. So now I'd like to show you just what a day in the life of my portfolio looks like. But because a day can be quite long, and though we still have about 15 minutes left, I don't want to show you everything. So I'll just cut it down to the ten, first 10 minutes of each hour. And all together is crunched up in one and a half minute. With a little commentary by myself. So it's 6.30, the day begins, not much activity there, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, it's picking up a little bit, and as you can see, um, where there's just the more light, the more activity is there, and 10 o'clock, the school day is in full swing, 11 o'clock, still kind of about the same, 12 o'clock, picks up again, and that's lunchtime. Because every, every student is now on their profile page and just checks out the wall messages that they've received from their friends. Now we're in the afternoon. Um, students are picking up on their homework. It's getting slightly more active. At 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, really everybody's on the platform doing homework. Um, now everybody, especially at 7 o'clock now, is probably having dinner. So not much computer work going on. But even in the evening, the activity doesn't really cease at all. Now probably the teachers are either giving feedback to their students or students just uploading things to the platform. And now it's almost midnight and still there are a lot of people on there. You'd think students sleep, but maybe it is also just the teachers um, still preparing classes for the next day or checking uh, what their students have done over the last few hours. And as you can see from the timestamp, it's now 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock and there are still people on it, and that is on a Thursday. So if you think that um, schoolwork only happens these days between the, uh, between the school hours and then in the evening, that's not the case anymore. Because of online learning, everything can now take place over the entire day, and it is up to every individual user uh, when they actually want to go online and when they want to do something. So even on a platform that is really developed for school students, kind of primary school to secondary school and we think they go to bed latest at 10 o'clock. It's not always the case, especially when there are social media features, uh, social networking features involved where they can also check each other's um, messages, send each other messages, post on the wall, update their profiles, um, upload new photos and so on. And it is just very active on there. And that is just a very brief glimpse of, of what's happening in a regular day. Of course, it's less active during the school holidays, but during school time, it's usually qu uh, quite a lot of people log in, usually about 700 per day. Um, on a regular day, can go up to 1,000, and even on the weekend, they are usually around three to 400 people logged in. So that's all that I wanted to talk to you about. Um, if you want to find out more about the Mahara project itself, uh, please go to mahara.org, or you can also follow the um, most important news on Identica or also on Twitter. 
And please also feel free to contact me, send me an email if you have any questions, but now we definitely still have enough time for those also here in the audience. And please wait until Max has given you the microphone so that it's being picked up by the audio recording. Do you have students from <coughs> me. Do you have students from different schools working on projects together? Um, sometimes yes. Mm -hmm. And that, is, that was also one of the purposes why a national ePortfolio service made a lot of sense because normally when you have a learning management system, you always need a login from that school. And so schools can't really create LDAP entries or single sign-on entries um, for other schools and students and so on my portfolio they don't need that. They can just um, start collaborating. It's especially going on with teachers. Um, the language teachers, for example, they have a group in which they um, talk across schools and also primary school teachers have a group where they just talk about how to work with ePortfolios. Mm -hmm. Just a question about mobile devices. Are you finding that students are actually accessing it mostly via mobile or still via desktop? Um, currently, the site is still, I think, primarily accessed by, um, by laptop computers, a lot of computers in general. A lot of schools, or some schools, go to bring your own device. So mobile is definitely picking up, and we've had uh, quite a few discussions on the platform about um, how people can actually use uh, the iPhone or also um, an Android device in order to put portfolio work up to collect their content. And there is an, an app, for, uh, Maharadroid, for Android available, where you can easily upload anything that is on your, that you can share on your Android phone um, to the portfolio. And um, what we have recently done for Mahara is that we've also created a responsive design for it, so for the latest 1.6 version, so that you actually don't need a special app in order to access it more comfortably from a mobile device, but um, the design just changes and becomes a little bit better to use. There's also device detection included, because um, in order to create a page, we have drag and drop, which doesn't really work on a touch device, and so we needed to um, have a switch in there so that people could actually still use it. And so in future, hopefully, that'll be picked up more. Um, we have not yet implemented a responsive design on my portfolio, so we don't have any data on that. Mm -hmm. How does it compete with, or, or maybe hopefully even replace, the other social networking services where you're subjected to data mining and advertising? Um, currently, I think it wouldn't really work because we do not have so many social networking features included. So, for example, we don't have a live stream um, and don't have any games or so that you can play and events calendar and things like that. But that can definitely be developed in the future. Um, in general, what is also nice about the environment is that you set your own terms and conditions. And that's why a lot of schools um, go with um, my portfolio, because then they are not subjected to Facebook or any other um, environment where they can't really control what is being seen. And also, in general, when you put something up on my portfolio, it is private to yourself. So nobody else will see it unless you share it to, uh, on a portfolio page. And even if you have a friend on the environment, that doesn't mean that the, this friend can see everything. But you still need to share it with a particular person or within particular institutions. So friends have a different connotation here. But the, the primary focus is currently still on the ePortfolio side of things. But there are also inquiries of including a chat system or making more um, networking features available so that it be goes more into the direction of Elk, what Elk already does, but where Elk kind of lacks some of the ePortfolio features. Do you know anything about the technology stack? Uh, yes, and if I make a mistake, Francois, please correct me. Um, it is um, PHP and po um, primarily Postgres. Uh, it also works with MySQL and uh, Linux on Linux servers, of course. And um, it's also been deployed to, to Microsoft and um, sometimes also Mac servers. Um, any other specifics that... 
I apologise if you said it at the start. I got an inter interstate call no, just I as I walked in. It happens. Yeah. Um, just wondering about the application if the, particularly the students, have a disability of some time, perhaps visibility or perhaps um, mobility or something like that. How are you handling that? Um, we have not yet come across any of these questions on my portfolio, but we've had inquiries in general for Mahara. And um, what we are working on and improving the accessibility for the site <coughs> and in the way that when, when we get inquiries about it or when somebody lets us know that it, one particular page is not accessible, that it then can be improved. But so far, we have not had too many inquiries. There has been a report here in Australia for one of our clients, of which Mahara was uh, a part. And so a few high-level things were pointed out that the developers are now also gradually working on improving. Anyone else? No? Well, if there's no more questions, please give Christina a big round of applause. And on behalf of all of us here at the conference and, and Linux Australia, thank you very much for your presentation. Thanks for emceeing, Max. You're welcome. Um, there will be a, a short break while we, um, while we get our next presenter set up. But we will be back with you shortly. Thank you very much. Very interesting. It sounds like a, a really good tool. Yeah, really like it. I was told not to unplug my computer before you do your magic over there with okay. me.